okay uh so congratulations to everybody um there are some logistical matters being taken care of such as your offices um some of the nameplates have already been modified so for example um madam treasurer you'll note that you have an office with a label on it already i believe on the third floor third fourth one of the two mm -hmm. um yeah uh criminal defense uh is generally where the lawyers will hang out uh malton uh the head of the bar association your office will be labeled and keys handed out shortly okay. same with deputy mayor uh chief of staff and mayor are already uh, fixed up on the fourth floor and then for pd and uh, medical liaisons those need to be repaired do, do we only have keys to our own offices Yes, uh, okay. although you may think you have keys to the other ones, you only have keys to yours. Fair enough. Um, I will get you guys all uh, hired on officially uh, after this. All I would ask is um, that we just make sure that I have your state IDs. Uh, so the easiest way for me is if now if you could just uh, you know, send me an email uh, with your state ID and I can take care of that later. As far as uh, meetings and initiatives and all that uh, moving forward, um, I know one of the biggest challenges with a group like this is going to be finding the right time we can all meet together. Um, so I I'm guessing, and I apologize for this, but for me personally, I'm not available during the week until after 7 Eastern. Uh, so to accommodate the time zones, it's most likely that uh, Saturday will be our best bet. Does that work for everybody? Is that possible? Yeah. Yeah, the most likely one, but I'm still going to be the odd one out, I think. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm figuring at least if it's a Saturday, we can do it a little earlier so you're not, you know, up at the ass crack of dawn. Mm. Uh, so we can we can work on times. Um, I think for most everyone, I, like you said, you'll be the odd man out. So I'll, uh, I'll work with you privately on getting sort of a, a baseline idea of when you're available. And then sort of coordinate with the calendar or whatnot. Um, I need to talk to Dakota also because I don't know his availability. No, uh, I, I, Dakota's going to be closer to Simone. He's a shift one cop, but he's generally around for a few hours after the storm. I don't know if that means he could go later, but he is around for a few hours after the storm at the very least. Okay, we'll try to find some middle ground. Um, in terms of uh, your oaths, um, I will be sending y'all uh, a document in your emails that you'll just sign that is the expectations of the office. Uh, it's the same thing that's already in legislation, just with a spot for you to sign. Basically says uh, that you don't have any allegiances to any groups that would prevent you from, you know, carrying forth your position in the best interest of the state. Uh, you're able to, you know, put forth the time necessary for the position and you have just no sign. felonies on your record. I've already screened all y'all, so I know the felonies are an issue. Everything else is just you committing to what you've already stated by running. Anyway, uh, that being it. said, congrats. Um, outside of some work I need to do with uh, Madam Treasurer over there and uh, Mr. Malton with Head of the Bar and setting up the Oversight Board, uh, the rest of our work will just be funneling uh, ideas forward that we can take some time to review internally and then vote on. So I've my suggestion would be that if you have ideas, um, you float them through Miss Mushkin Domino. Uh, she is the head of the county clerks, so she will handle everything going in and out of the building in terms of our meetings, uh, anything y'all need. She's a good conduit to get in touch with me. Mm -hmm. um, now, in terms of uh, bringing forth ideas and legislation, uh, I wanted to sort of poll you guys. Uh, do you just want to kind of do it ad hoc? Do you want to do it where maybe That's there's me, like, dude. you know, people bring up maybe one thing each meeting? How do you, how would you like to proceed? I think just ad hoc for now, because yeah. there's a, there's yeah. a lot of backlog. We probably have to rapid fire through. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. If we wait until one specific day, we're going to end up with quite a bit on our plate. So All right. handling um, it as it comes is probably ideal. So I'll reiterate in case anyone isn't explicitly familiar. Uh, the procedure will be that uh, legislation may be brought forward or uh, not legislation, but policy, I guess we'll say, can be brought forward by anyone on the council. Uh, there will be, you know, deliberation, discussion at the meetings. 
uh, we can then hold formal votes on these items. In terms of uh, the positions, I'm not going to, you know, fault anyone and remove their vote because they couldn't be there for a meeting because people have things come up. So if you absolutely can't be there, uh, I'm going to rely upon you to get me your vote ahead of time, which I will keep confidential until the meeting. Um, in terms of uh, the way the voting works, so there are, as you may have noticed, eight seats on the council. Uh, the tiebreaker vote will always land with the mayor. So should there be a four to four vote on something, the mayor's vote will carry the direction of the outcome. Uh, finally, there is a veto clause whereby the um, federal government will review all votes and legislation entries. If uh, there are six or fewer votes in one direction, uh, then the federal government has the power to veto any legislation we put forth. If there is what we're calling like a supermajority, where there's seven to eight people on the council voting in the same direction, uh, aka it's either unanimous or one person dissents, uh, then the federal government cannot veto it and it goes in just based on our vote. Any questions on those procedures at all? Yeah, um, for, from just a logistical standpoint, as far as like proposed legislation, is, is the only thing that's let's say uh, out of bounds the the constitution. Like we could like, can we propose legislation to repeal or modify previous ones and, and things like that? Uh, I will put it this way: uh, anything should be entertained for debate and discussion. I will say that part of my role is going to be ensuring that we actually crazy, operate though. in a way that is not catastrophically uh, destructive. Mm -hmm. So, okay. for example, when legislation is produced, uh, I won't be giving hard opinions as to I think this is good or bad. I will do that with my vote, obviously. Uh, but in terms of advising the council on a general objective perspective, I will be a resource for a legal perspective just to say, uh, this is feasible or this has some issues, you know, with implementation, things like that. Right. Understood. Uh, besides that, uh, the goal here is to ensure that uh, the people's voice is heard. So I have explicitly left many things ambiguous or even uh, I have not worked on them yet because I want the council to be the ones to take those up. Uh, so if y'all feel that there's anything that you notice legislation that you think needs to be addressed or uh is uh lacking uh then you know anything is fair game the only thing i will note is that uh uh and this is mostly for max and his team and the deputy mayor um we will preserve the process previously um with business applications which is uh, the mayor's office will be the arbiter of uh, granting uh, business approvals. However, the DOJ will be the ones handing out licenses for businesses. So the DOJ will act as sort of a uh, backstop, um, sort of oversight, secondary check on issuing businesses. Uh, and that's solely for the purpose of, uh, let's just say, feasibility and logistics that I will coordinate uh, with the federal government. So besides that, uh, everything should flow through your respective uh, groups. Uh, we we covered it a little. Obviously, we know we got to get like time sorted out with uh, Nakoda and some of the the people who are around earlier. But is the intention for this council to meet weekly? Then on on whatever day and time we decide, if possible, weekly would be the day where we would do the voting. Um, and obviously, you know, any time in between, if people wanted to meet, you know, in smaller groups or just discuss things or whatever. Uh, then that's, you know, part and parcel of the job. Mm -hmm. That's right. Any, uh, any direct questions, no, suggestions, comments? Anybody got anything, you know, burning that they want to bring up? The main thing I, I'd like to bring up, and I, I did speak about this with uh, some other members of the council in the past, but I, uh, I don't even want to touch the topic of weapons licenses until guns are, are no longer smooth barreled. That, that's just what I want to bring forward. Yeah, I'm not in any hurry to unleash guns I'm on the populace yeah. after the shit show that we witnessed not but an hour ago. Yeah, once once they start having uh, casing striations, then then maybe. But I, I I think our time is better spent focused on other matters other than a, a weapons license, as that'll quickly get out of hand. 
Yeah. Yeah, I will. I will say that I'm. Uh, I'm not inclined to want to be issuing license licenses anytime soon, and if they were to be issued, it would be an extremely limited fashion of very very limited people. Uh, but even then, I just I don't. Given the spate of robberies that we've seen, where police officers have been held up for their guns, I don't think there's much uh, value to issuing select civilian licenses right now, just because. It just seems like it would make them a target more than yeah. anything. Yeah, they'll just yeah. be farmed for their weapon, yeah. Oh, God. The, uh, the, the only other thing I'll, I'll like to add, and this is just from like a, a lawyer point of view of people calling me, I, I think what people are chomping at the bit for most other than weapons licenses is, is official business guidelines. So I, I think if this council yeah. could start thinking on those yeah. or having a little mini ming on those, I think that should be the first yeah. thing we, we what, tackle. Yeah. What do you guys think about making them pay to have a business? Oh, of course. Yeah. naturally i mean absolutely yes a, a crane how, is how is, much does it depend on region or so my uh, i mean it would depend on the business it would depend i'll, I'll on give the you an example the, the 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 just the license issuance in the past was ten thousand dollars that's pretty cheap that was just the issuance of the license uh formally through the doj that didn't cover you know any of the uh, proposal materials they had to get put together through a lawyer or, you know, their submissions to the mayoral office. I mean, there, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff that people should be doing. Right, I'm doing um, notes right now. Logos, I think people, yeah. one of the prices, biggest things that so. I'm, uh, uh, one of the biggest things that I'm most concerned about is, um, uh, well, a couple things. First, uh, one of the biggest mistakes we had in the past is we allowed, uh, bold-faced criminals to own businesses i don't think that should be the case agreed um agreed. so much like you know the standards for the council where you can't have felonies on your record uh, i don't think felons should be running uh you know businesses uh in terms of uh licensing and approval i think that people should need to demonstrate their commitment to that field, so to speak. So for example, <laughs> yeah, RIP Vinny. Uh, we had a lot of speculative business operation in the past. Uh, there, you know, there were people who were prolific in their ownership and then subsequent lack of use of those businesses. So mm -hmm. some folks would own 10 businesses. And as someone who perused the business roles constantly, I will tell you that a good, I would say 60% of all the businesses in the city were completely dormant. Uh, and those businesses oh, no, were likely often used as vessels to just uh, hide money from the police for criminal enterprises. So right. we, as the city council, uh, I think need to be a bit smarter when it comes to how we issue business licenses to who, when, for what, 100%. So as to ensure that they do not become, you know, simply used to avoid uh, taxation or oversight. As and a, we should also look into, I'm sorry, Molten. Uh, so when also, is Mary uh, introduced to the city council? A hard cap on certain businesses. Whenever she wants uh, to fucking role play out of Mosley's. Oversaturation because towards the end of the collapse, it was... Uh, it was Everyone ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, everybody no, had access to everything, and it just made having a business Wait, completely. Uh, what, what do you want? What do you want me? Well, to, what do you want the answer uh, to, to be up. like? Michael, it's not going to be like, oh, uh, Mary's your, just going to be in the city council past, now. You definitely owned businesses. What do you think? <laughs> right now, my brain is not thinking. Yeah, I got you. Eva's quick it? again. Yes, I hired her. It's a five forty-three. Yeah, as I as a as a general question for everyone here, we we talked about having like a clean record to let's say own and operate these businesses. But does that mean that if you have a record, you shouldn't have any ownership share in it, or are we okay with let's say a felon having like a ten percent or you know something minor like I that? Zero percent. Comfortable. Zero. Yeah. Violent felon. Zero. No. Okay. Yeah. Fuck. Fuck. Hold fuck on. These hold guys. on. Hold on, I want to hear um, what was the depends comment. I said depends on what the company is, to some degree. Okay, yeah, I mean that's a fair point. For example, uh, I'll I'll give you an example already. Uh, I had Larry Knox call me up and tell me that 
I know as well as he does that no one else can make fried chicken like him. And he has a felony and he would be completely unable to own or operate or be involved in business. Uh, It is. And I, but I told him, I said, first of all, we haven't even, and this is another thing we'll need to discuss as a group. uh, We haven't even discussed the concept of expungements. A lot of people just feel entitled to them and think that they're going to exist. Uh, I don't know if that's the case. That is a discussion for us. So, um, if we are to, you know, bar people from owning businesses based on their record, the secondary question is, you know, is that record permanent? Are there ways to expunge yourself? Are there ways to, you know, rework your life? Mm -hmm. So that's something we should probably also think about hand in hand with the idea of uh, who can own a business. Uh, I'd say no to that guy. I don't give a shit if it's a food place or not. He made his choice. Do you think uh, there should be expungements at all? Uh, uh I th- I, you know what do you think about a, a million dollar expungements i think expungement should be allowed because <laughs> everybody deserves a second chance um you know I, there's quite a few people in this room that are proof of that but is, I don't wow i think they should be handed out like candy the way they were fuck it dog project gorgon for I, they were a, they were a far, month they were far they too easy to get and far too frequent what did they say this guy's name is Nick? Two-week period in which you'd, you know, you would, uh, you'd have to be clean. I think there should be stuff like community service or something along those lines that are involved. If yeah. there is an expression, I thought people I really uh-huh. need to show and prove that they genuinely want to turn yeah. a new leaf and do Alc- or even just a, I, I don't know what you want to call it, but like a quasi like parole officer. Because let's let's be honest, it wasn't two weeks of being clean; it was two weeks of not getting caught doing crime. Exactly, very true. true. Yes. Exactly. So yeah, Molten, I'll follow you have a great, up. Yeah. you have a great idea of um of having a, a parole officer and it sh- I, I don't think it should just be one of those things where um you call up hey i'm around and then that's it it should be more than that yeah, i think uh when it comes to things like expungements you know i i don't know if the doj or, or this council oh, will be name. the authority but uh we we may not have to have the standard of beyond a, a reasonable doubt right like if we got mm-hmm. let's let's just say two to three uh private investigators who are saying like Nah, they're still up to some funky shit. You know, there's no reason why we have to grant them that expungement or whoever the authority is to grant that. Former super terrorist mayor. There's no record of that. uh, There may be portions of my purview that will remain within my discretion. Beyond eight years ago, you know how judges do things in certain aspects of the law. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm pointing out that uh, I'm going to operate in good faith as if. Uh, that weren't the case when it comes to issues to bring up to the council. I don't think it's spelled like so that. I'm pretty sure it's spelled like Max in terms and of, uh, expungements and you know the judicial authority. No. Oh, it is spelled uh, Max. The final say on that will probably still rest with the DOJ. I want the program itself to be created and endorsed in cooperation with all y'all. That's for, my sort of uh, point of view. For yeah. businesses, do you still have the same, uh, let's say, ability Doors? in the past, crane for like bank accounts? There's and, no record and things like that of it anymore. We are He's done so his time. Things uh, that uh, is uh, well, the, so a couple things that 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 are that are in the pipeline that I'll need taking to discuss, orf out uh, of my fucking Madam emotes, Treasurer dog. Um, taking orf out of my fucking quite emotes. Quite a different approach when it comes to how the uh, federal and state governments handle banking uh Mm. in the past there was a uh, well there there was there was a mistake made where joint savings account uh at one time were handed out to people so say billy and sally want to buy a house together they get a joint savings account and pull their money and uh that you know made it easier for contracts and such and then they could buy a house together uh, unfortunately, that uh, system was almost immediately and almost exclusively uh, used for gangs to create uh, illicit shared savings accounts. Of course. So uh, as a result, uh, the banking system will no longer be issuing those types of accounts, period. Gotcha. Great idea. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, but, you know, we will... We will need to talk about the logistics. And again, I need to meet with Madam Treasurer on some of this because some of that's going to be her purview um, in terms of spearheading it. Uh, but in terms of logistics of how bank accounts are tied, hmm. ownership of the account, uh, one thing that's important to note 
when we're discussing um, things like minority stakes in a business is that, uh, you know, if they get a contract written up and they have, you know, legal agreements as to how authority over the business is controlled, that's fine. Uh, but all the accounts and everything still needs to be in one person's name. Okay. So at the end of the day, it will be very important to ensure the people who are being granted. Uh, and then, again, this goes to the idea of having that second step with the DOJ issuing the licensing uh, is that there will need to be very important to have background screenings and, you know, assurances regarding the people who are being issued these licenses and their businesses. Sounds good to me. Um. Okay, uh, I I'll be honest with you. Uh, I intentionally have uh, not pursued closing a lot of holes that may exist simply because I wanted to give the council the opportunity to do what y'all will do with your positions. Um, so in terms of legislation, I'll tell you right now, uh, the only things that are in the pipeline uh, are likely related to uh, there is uh, a proliferation of cash on the streets right now. Um, PD are investigating and filtering us information as much as they can. Uh, but there are some uh, investigative operations happening, looking into the sources of these uh, loose rolled bills, uh, the use of the, them being traded on the street. Uh, whether or not they're connected to certain types of crime or not, uh, but there is sort of a uh, uh, a decent enough uh, connection in terms of their investigations thus far that we have several different laws right now related to the proliferation of this dirty money. For now, when people are found with rolled bills, they're just being charged with a charge that is a tracking charge. So there's no time, no fine. Uh, but in the future, as those investigations develop, and I will share that with the council as much as I can, uh, we may move towards charges related to outright classifying uh, those types of items as contraband. Uh, besides that, we're working on the hunting legislation. Uh, as of right now, I only know of people hunting deer in the Polito Mountains. Uh, however, I have heard some scant reports of uh, various exotic animals being spotted. So in the coming weeks, there may be further developments to that legislation related to uh, punishments for uh, poaching said exotic animal. And as always, I'll keep you all apprised of all that. That's, uh, that's about what I got in the pipeline right now. Everything else is related to uh, uh, sort of anything that will come up. Oh, uh, we do have a new case law that Norman Adams just published that you all should be aware of. Which one? Pat and Romney. Correct. Oh. This is called uh, the Hit and Rami Doctrine or the Spit oh, and Run Doctrine. Okay, I've heard about this. Okay, yeah, go and it says that any individual who is involved in a motor vehicle accident resulting in injury, dismemberment, or death of any individual is required to, one, remain on scene, two, contact emergency services via 911, three, cooperate with accident scene investigation, including identifying themselves to law enforcement and the victim. <laughs> Individuals who fail to do so will be charged with felony hit and run. Ignorance is not a defense to this, meaning uh, there was a court case where Rami was alleged to have gotten in a verbal argument with an EMS parked in the emergency lanes behind the hospital. Rami is then alleged to have gotten his car and driven off. The EMS states that Rami intentionally backed into him and broke his arm. Rami states the accident didn't happen and he just drove away. Uh, we realized in the judiciary that our laws in terms of hit and run or negligent driving or anything didn't really fit uh, the circumstance and there's such a need of the public interest to resolve those scenarios that do result in accidents uh, that we feel that felony hit and run should apply even if someone claims they're ignorant of the accident occurring because if you're driving a car and you run someone over uh, and you didn't even know it happened then you probably shouldn't be driving in the first place it's more akin to like reckless endangerment uh, so that'll be published uh, shortly mm-hmm I have a, a general question. You may be able to provide guidance on Crane. Uh, where is the line between, let's say, internal policy matters within a department versus like city council business? Like, for example, if I want to talk about lawyer pay, mm. is that just something that, you know, you, me, and the treasurer could work out on our own? Or is that something that has to like come before the council? I was going to ask that as well. Uh, okay. So things 
like pay for specific departments uh, will be handled on a group basis primarily uh, between the treasurer and that department. Now, uh, in terms of adjustments of taxes and things like that, that's the mayor's purview. Um, now, there may be controls put in by the federal or state government to ensure that we don't, again, do anything catastrophic. Uh, as an example, in the past, there were limits to how far uh, any mayor or treasurer or whoever could adjust pay or taxes in any one direction as to prevent a, you know, seesaw effect where, let's say, you know, someone comes into office who hates the government, and decides there should be no taxes and it goes to zero. And then someone comes in who decides that, oh, shit, the state account is in the negative time to tax everyone at 80 uh, mm percent. -hmm. So to keep a more even keeled ship, uh, there may be some controls. Again, these are things I have to discuss with the Madam Treasurer. Um, but you know, it's kind of a both answer, Malton. Sorry, I don't really have a perfect. No, you're good. Uh, I believe that uh, things. Yeah, I like doubt a grinder's going to stay in fucking. Like that, those are things you should meet primarily. <laughs> if I got hit by a group on. sex driver. They're still uh, gonna go. Number one, just to see if it's even feasible. Number two, to get you know her take on it. Uh, and then maybe once you have that sort of basis to speak from, no fucking uh, way that they're it staying. Should be presented to the group for discussion. Doesn't mean necessarily gotcha. that group is going to override internal policy, but you know, again, it's good that we all get buy-in with each other's actions because we will often be asked to answer for each other's actions, which is a good, you know, segue. Right. Uh, as a member of the city council, please remember that you are representative of the group. If you are, you know, out there doing dumb shit, uh, it will reflect poorly on all of us. So we should all endeavor to act in a way that makes all of us uh, not look good, but, you know, let's say resemble the oath that we take. So that'll be my only comment on that. Any other uh, comments, questions from anybody? I know um, some of y'all are probably itching to go out and, you know, boof some ecstasy under the highway. Uh, <laughs> looking at you there, Max. Um... <laughs> Okay, well, uh, nothing else heard. Uh, we'll be employing a seven-second rule in the future, so if seven seconds go by at the end of these meetings and nobody says anything, we're going to call it. So thank you all for being here, uh, and if, uh, again, you have any logistical questions, anything else comes up that you just don't know how, you know, which way is up, feel free to reach out and I'll find the answer. Okay. All right. Thanks, y'all. Uh, I'll coordinate time zones, and we'll aim for somewhere around the um, the oh. EU tsunami uh, next Saturday for our first meeting. Wow. Thank you, guys. Wow. Yeah, it was the first meeting.